Can you go a bit higher? If I go any higher, only dogs will hear me. Try. Green biopic Bohemian Rhapsody hit theaters November 2nd with Mr. Robot star Rami Malek bringing the band's charismatic frontman Freddie Mercury back to life in a performance that has gained widespread praise. For Malek to embody Mercury's energy and flamboyance, he had to undergo a dramatic transformation which involves some serious makeup and the guidance of a movement coach. Hair and makeup department head Jan Sewell was the artist tasked with taking 37-year-old Malik from Mercury at age 19 into his late 30s. Certainly parts of his face really look like Freddy, but then there are other parts that don't, says Sewell. Rami's nose was a bit bigger, so he put on a tiny prosthetic nose to give him the very straight aquiline nose that Freddy had, and because that also helped bring Rami's eyes in a bit. Sewell used eye makeup with shading to make his eyes appear closer together and shaded in his cheeks. Rami has a fantastic jawline, not too different from Freddie, but I brought that out even more, she says. The department also had multiple mouthfuls of teeth made to more closely match Mercury's distinctive pearly whites. According to Sewell, we went through many pairs until we got the pair that we thought would do what we needed them to do, but wouldn't take over. Turns out the precision of Sewell's artistry was proven when Queen band member Brian May's wife Anita came to set. Says Sewell, Rami came up to the stage as Freddie in his later look and she burst into tears. It was so emotional. Meanwhile, movement director Polly Bennett was given the job of getting Malik to move like Mercury. At their first meeting, Bennett told the Mr. Robot actor she wasn't going to teach him choreography in the traditional sense. You need to understand why this man moves the way that he did, she told him. That's what's helpful for an actor. Rami isn't a dancer, therefore I shouldn't be treating him as one. In order to help Malik truly inhabit the role, Bennett did a deep dive into Mercury's life, not just examining footage of interviews and performances, but also delving into his youth so she could deconstruct Mercury's movements. Everyone moves differently because of what they've experienced, what they've seen, who their family is, what space they've grown up in. This is what I've called a movement heritage, she says. Two interesting discoveries were that Mercury frequently masked his mouth using a microphone, cigarette or glass because he was self-conscious about his teeth and that he had been a long distance runner in his youth which contributed to the way he sprinted across the stage. Bennett explains that her greatest challenge was combining Mercury's spontaneity with the film's faithful frame-by-frame -frame recreation of Queen's 1985 Live Aid performance. There was no freedom in it, she says, so to make it not look learned or structured and to teach it in a way that felt free was something I had to be mindful of. While Sewell's moment came in the form of Anita May's emotional reaction, for Bennett, it was when she watched Malik perform the 20 minute Live Aid set from beginning to end. Says the movement coach, when he did the whole section, beat by beat, gesture for gesture, breathing at the right time, flipping the microphone at the right time, not skipping a line, picking up a guitar, playing the right chords, Proud doesn't even begin to describe it. To read more on this story, head to THR.com. For The Hollywood Reporter News, I'm Lindsay Rodriguez.